feeding information to the senior guy. And I think I think that that had been invaluable to to bringing young referees through. Um, but yeah, there's there's massive pressure coming, you know, especially somebody somebody young with we, we very little experience. Um, so it's it's a big task. I think rugby league as well relies so heavily sometimes on the video ref and the kind of the cameras. Those. I know football is getting a lot more into it now with VAR, but rugby league was well ahead of the curve. How, how did you find coming into it? Did you get a lot of education on the camera side and and video ref side of it before you debuted, or was it just like you say, sink or swim? Um, yeah, a little bit, but it was just thrown in at the deep end, and um, you learn a lot by obviously your colleagues you work with getting you get feedback during the week from them. But um, yeah, it's very much sink or swim. Um, that's that's how it is. <clears throat> Pretty cut for up, but obviously, I suppose when you're in a profession like a referee and there's so much pressure on you, you've got you, you've got to swim. You can't sink because it's just going to lead to more pressure if you do get calls wrong. Just uh, fast forwarding a bit and touching on probably would have been one of your first real career highlights was the 2006 Challenge Cup final that you refereed. How did that come about and how did you get informed of that? Um, well, yeah, that, that was obviously the breakthrough um, big big game I'd refereed. I, I was getting close for the for the last two years leading up to that <coughs> refereed um, Challenge Cup semi-finals. Um, I thought, you know, my, my Super League form I was running the top three, top four. So I knew that, you know, short, very shortly my, my chance was going to come and um, we wasn't full-time back then. Uh, that that was the year that we did go full-time. So I was I was working as a, in construction as a, a sales manager. Um, and yeah, I got, got informed uh, by, I think it was Stuart Cummins who was in charge back then. Um, got informed by Stuart that... Uh, yeah, semi-final rugby had, had gone well and um, it was always the case that the final got picked from the two semi-final referees. So I knew I, knew I had a 50-50 chance and yeah, my, mine had gone well. I think it was Leeds, Huddersfield had refereed in the semi at Odsall. Um, gone really well and yeah, honoured to get to get the shot. Um, disappointed it wasn't at Wembley, but uh, yeah, good experience. Definitely. Um, just a, a, a random question. I don't mean to pry, but when you think of players, obviously you have your higher ranking players who are probably paid more. How does it work within the referees? Is it the more established referees will get a higher wage once it went full time? And for refereeing fi finals, semi-finals, playoffs game, do you get any kind of bonus with that or is it just a flat rate continuous throughout the season? Yeah, so when we, when we went full time in, in 2006, we kind of all on flat flat rate um so yeah i think i think the salaries salaries back then ranged from about 20 25 to 35 but we were all you know very much around the 30k mark when we went full time in 2006 um <clears throat> that that kind of led to, led to my first suspension so um we got we got sold quite a lot of um false False hope when we went full time. Uh, Stuart Cummins, the RFL said, um, you know, I was I was working obviously as the sales manager back in 2006 on on good money, uh, earning part time money doing the rugby. So in total, I was probably earning about 45k. Then obviously the the opportunity to came to uh, to go full time in 2006, and there, there was only offering 30 to 35k. So. Straight away, I was taking a 10k drop. <clears throat> Got promised that you know, take it for now. 12 months' time, um, we're going to have all this money made available to us. Your, your salary is going to go up. There's going to be a company car. Blah de blah. Never happened. So after 12 months, that that's kind of when the first um, suspension happened. We we um, we were meeting up with the Premier Football referees was a joint venture what Stuart Cummings had put together. And so there was um, uh, cricket, so umpires in, in cricket, there was rugby union referees, uh, top flight rugby union refs, uh, football refs, and, and obviously rugby league refs. And we all we all met up once a month and shared ideas, um, which which were pretty good to be fair. Um, and it was, it was then meetings where we got talking to the football refs and they said, 
you know, are you in a, a union? Have you got anybody looking after um, your packages and, and stuff like that and what, what you can earn out of the game? Um, and obviously it was a no. They put us on to um, this union called Prospects in, in Sheffield. Um, and that, that was kind of where, where the the issue started with, with the first suspension. Um, they didn't like that we've got a union on board. Um, they they kind of rejected the uh, the union straight off. They said we can only accept a union if um, all the officials or a certain percentage of the officials all signed up. So <clears throat> the union guy um, said, have you got a, a contact list for, for all the referees and officials? So I sent it on email uh, so he could write to them all. They deemed that as breach of data protection. Uh, and that's that's where I got suspended. <laughs> How did you actually find out about the suspension? Did they just send you an email saying you, you, you can't do any more refereeing? And what did you do to sort of occupy your time then? From the well, no, how, it, how it came about, the uh, on this contact list was all the, uh, the coaching staff as well. <laughs> so... So the coaching staff got, got a letter from the, the union. So that's that's kind of how they'd known that um, that something had, that somebody had obviously given the uh, the information. Um, so yeah, that, that went out on the Saturday, I think it was, and on the Monday, uh, the RFL and IT people had just done a quick quick search and sent this email, and obviously my name popped up, and that was that. <laughs> I mean. 2019 is pretty, sounds pretty eventful for you. Uh, that year, you also got to do the Anzac test, I believe, between Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, over in Brisbane. Can you, before I ask you a question about it, can you, well, firstly, how do you find out about that? Because that's massive. And can you summarise that experience for us, please? Oh, that, <clears throat> I think, to, whilst I got the 2006 final, um, I still didn't feel quite, quite as I'd made it. Um, I did have a good season that 2006 season, but um, 2007, 2008, I, I didn't really feel like I was still in that top two. Um, and then 2009, out of the blue, I, um, obviously they, they must have uh, asked for three nominations and I was one of the three um, and, and then got picked. So <clears throat> just just flying down there and um, was unbelievable to... I was, all the way down, I was just pinching myself, thinking, what, I, "This can't, this can't be real." It, you know, it's, I, I can't, I can't believe that I'm on the stage of some of these like renowned NRL players and international players. Um, and yeah, walking out at uh, at the Suncorp, 50, 55,000 people, seeing the Acker first stand, um, my my heart was beating out of my chest. Obviously, you know. I was so nervous, but um, thankfully it went really well. And uh, from from that point, I came back and uh, I just grew another leg. Um, 2010 and two, 2016, I just um, you know everything just seemed to click. Um, I had that that confidence that I was the best referee in in, in our country, and you know it, I think um, I think it showed with my performances as well. Yeah, most definitely. But obviously, you know, you, you've got a bit of experience at Super League now. You, you've done Challenge Cup finals and you're, you're getting used to working with these players and these blokes. But obviously, you, you mentioned about, yeah, to remind yourself you're going over it were unreal. What would it like actually have been there, you know, waiting to kick off and you're looking around, there's blokes like Benji Marshall, Darren Lockyer, GI. Did you starstruck at any point or did you have to think, wow, hang on a minute, I'm still on field with future legends of the game? You do, and, uh, you know, you, you always rem remember your first first final, first game, um, uh, and you just you just get better and better. It looked like I, I did four four hands that test, and uh, my second one were, were better than my first one. My third were better than my second and first, and my fourth were better than my third and second and first. You know, you, you just gain that experience of of knowing how to handle top top level players, um, and and the big thing is that. Once you've done a first, you know, you go a second time, you haven't got that nerves. Um, and I think that was a big thing on, on my first one. I was so nervous, but luckily um, they just played. It was just like touching pass. They just played for me. Uh, penalty count, I think, was about 2-2. Two two. Um, different level, just 
so so much quicker than Super League. Uh, the skill level unreal. Um, but yeah, real good experience. Yeah, that, that perfectly brings me on to my next question. Obviously, over here you'd, you'd start to begin a rapport with the Super League players and the blocks around you. Did you find it that the Aussies and Kiwis were trying it on a bit more with you? Obviously, we've not been too sure about you or how you're going to ref the game. Did you find that they were trying it a little bit more or were they just clean cut got on with it? No, I thought I thought the players um, bought into what was what was wanted and, um, and just seemed to get on with it. The, the bit I struggled with that you, you come off and uh, you feel it's been a really good game, it's been a, a really quick game, and then and then you get the coaches moaning about rook speed or oh, English referee game was slow, but all the media. I think Mark Geyer was commentating on, on one of the games said, oh, um, wow, why, why can't we have one referee every week in the NRL? We've got two refs and he's managed it really well. There's 2-2 two, two penalty count, blah, blah, blah. Uh, game's gone really well. And then you get Stephen Kearney saying, oh, rook speed was slow. English referees, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be on it. It should be one of ours, blah. And they're like, jeez. You mentioned it a couple of times now, mate, that games have gone well. From a refereeing perspective, what is a good performance? Is it no penalties? Is it loads of penalties? Is it good rook speed? Is it slowing the game down a sense? What what is a game going well from a referee perspective? I think I think with experience, you know, you know when a game's gone well, the you, you, players out on your back. Um, there hasn't been many 50-50 calls. Um there's been no dubious tries. There's been no game-changing decisions on a referee's call. So when you when you get that, you, you kind of know that you know things have gone gone okay. Um, and and you get that feel. The more experienced you become, you you, you know straight away when when a game's gone well and a, and a game hasn't. Do you ever feel as though you got pressure from kind of the higher ups in the refereeing world to to give more penalties or fewer penalties, or did you? I can imagine you specifically sticking to your game and not listening, really. But do you ever get that pressure? Oh, Stuart, uh, Stuart Cummins. I think obviously refereeing's hard, but I think uh, being being a referee manager, I think it's probably even harder because he, he must have had coaches on every week with their own agendas and, and trying to. Um, Trying to manage that and obviously get the message across to us must have been must have been hard for Stuart. Um, for example, I can imagine Tony Smith on the phone every week wanting to know why uh, referees are, are managing players and not just penalising. Um, I think if you if you asked every coach in Super League what what the ideal referee performance is, I think. Some would say, or most would say, low penalty count. Um, games with, with both teams in the arm wrestle, so to speak. Um, yeah, quite quite good flow to the game. Then I think you'd get some that would want the game refereed as per, per the, the rules of the game. Um, and that becomes difficult because, obviously, if... Take a Marcus for example. If if somebody's not square and you and you talk him talk him out of a penalty, but yet he's not affected the game and the game's flowing as a as a result. Some will like that. Some some won't like that. They'll they'll want the penalty. And that's that's kind of probably where Stuart was on on every facet of the game. I mean, you mentioned it very briefly, mate. But twenty ten was was arguably your most star studded year. You had the Anzac, you had the Four Nations, you had the World Club Challenge, you had the Challenge Cup Final, the Grand Final, and the International Ref of the Year. Must must be your, your best today. It was, yeah, it was. Um, brilliant season, 2010. Like I said, I think it all came from that 2009 Anzac game. I think um, <clears throat> it just it just sent me to another level. Uh, the the confidence I got from that, I just came back. Uh, uh, and it was uh, I was invincible refereeing on the field. I had so much confidence. Um, yeah, I just, I just flew on uh, in 2010. With, I mean, if you think it's hard to obviously do comparison, but if you compare to a player, say they achieved all that, won everything possible, <laughs> the following season there would be then pressure on that player to achieve the same things they've achieved. 
as a referee, did you find that was the same thing? Or were you just like, I'm the best referee, I'm going to smash this? Or did you think, right, I've proved myself.